there and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. And today we're going to be talking about how self tanners work and how this technology was actually discovered. And if you want to see more videos like this or ingredient focused makeup reviews, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you will always be notified when I upload a new one. With that, let us jump into the video. So the main ingredient in self tanners is dihydroxy acetone, which browns the skin. You're gonna find this in pretty much every single self tanner out there. And this was discovered by accident by Eva Wittgenstein. In the 1950s at the Children's Hospital at the University of Cincinnati, she was researching the effects that large doses of DHA cause in children who have glycogen storage disease. The kids ingested a lot of DHA, so sometimes they would spit it up, they would get some of it on their skin, and if it was not wiped away, after a few hours they would develop brown spots on their skin. And that's how Wittgenstein discovered a way to self-tan. The reaction that explains this is the Maillard reaction, in which sugars react with amino acids. And in this case, those amino acids found in the dead layer on top of the skin to yield pigments called melanoidins. This is a very common reaction in foods. Examples of this are the roasting of coffee, what makes beer brown, and what makes bread crust golden brown. In the case of baking, this occurs faster because of higher temperatures, but for self-tanning, this reaction takes a few hours to kick in. These tans usually don't last more than a week because these are affecting the top layer of skin and you shed your skin so frequently. Another common ingredient used in conjunction with DHA is erythrulose, which is naturally found in red raspberries. And it reacts similarly to DHA, but on its own it takes longer to produce a tan and it fades faster. But the color is more red than brown in appearance. That is why it's used in combination with DHA, so it yields a more natural color and fades better than DHA on its own. So this is part of the reason why self-tanning looks better now, more natural, more so than back of the day when everybody was orange. The other part is using DHA that has higher purity, using carriers to help the pigment penetrate better, and lowering the pH to help with efficacy, and a few other things. So this is how gradual tanners without pigment work, just like this Jergens In Shower Tanner Moisturizer. The active ingredients in this do all the work, and that is why the color does not rub off onto anything else. But the kind of tanners that you wear for a few hours and rinse off do have colorants added to them because this helps get a more intense and quick tan. So these colorants do stay in the skin, but this is why they do rub off on other things. And one thing to note is self-tanner does not give you sun protection. In fact, a study in 2007 showed that your skin might be slightly more susceptible to UV rays for up to 24 hours after wearing self-tanner, so please make sure you wear your sunscreen. So if you learned something interesting about self-tanner today, please don't forget to click the like button so I know you want to see more videos like these, and hit the subscribe button so you won't miss when I upload new videos. And I'm also going to pin a thread down below where you can leave your questions about makeup ingredients, products, etc. And I will leave the time and the date of my next live because you seem to enjoy the lives and I want to make sure I can find your questions easily. And with that, I will see you in my next video.